Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 things about Reaper. First and foremost, I have demoed and used many different DAWs, so this is not a one-sided view. I've tried Ableton Live, FL Studio, Reason, Acid Pro, Pro Tools, Cubase, Studio One, Bitwig, and Cakewalk Sonar. Many DAWs have things that I really enjoy about them, and some leave a lot to be desired. There are things I love about Ableton, and things about it that have pushed me away from using it completely. No DAW is flawless. However, Reaper feels like the flaws that it has are not so impactful that it would cause me to want to jump ship and go to another DAW. So let me begin by saying there will be things in my list that are not unique to Reaper, and some things that are unique to Reaper. So if it's unique, I'm going to put a little asterisk next to the number. And if it's just something that you can do in any DAW, it will just have the number. Most DAWs allow you to create, record, edit, and add effects to your tracks. But only a small amount of them truly let you work the way that you want to work. Everyone has their preferences, and these are solely mine. I hope this video helps open your eyes to the functionality of Reaper and maybe sways you into trying it out. Remember, a DAW is only as good as the person using it, so although I feel like Reaper meets all my needs, it may not meet all of yours. So that being said, let's get into the top 10 reasons why Reaper works for me. Number 10. It's a stand-in for any other DAW. It can do what other DAWs can do, and it often does it better. You can replace Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, Acid Pro, Cubase, and Cakewalk with little to no culture shock. You're not going to be going into Reaper and all of a sudden thinking, how do I use this? Even if you're used to Bitwig, Ableton, or FL Studio, you'll find new things that you really prefer about Reaper. Reaper doesn't discriminate on plugins, so whether you're bringing in 32-bit plugins or 64-bit, you're going to have no issues. They'll work like clockwork. You don't have to use JBridge, which is such a nice thing, as if you know anything about Ableton, you know that you have to use that for your older plugins. Number nine, it has free, stable, and fast plugins, the Kakos and JS plugins. Now, they don't technically come with Reaper, but you easily download them for free, and they're quick and to the point. There's no frills. You can save tons of RAM. Although they may leave a little bit to be desired, that's why it's number nine on the list, but these plugins can do pretty much anything you need them to do. You can produce a song from start to finish with the stock Kakos plugins and the JS plugins, and it will sound professional. For those just starting out, it's a perfect free option. Did I mention these plugins are fully functional and free? You can automate all the features, and of course, they are free. Number eight, scripting. So Rhea scripts, Python, EEL2, and Lua are open source scripting languages that allow users to create their own scripts for plugins and tools to make Reaper more expansive and useful to you. This leads to the number one spot you'll see later. What's so great is that you are able to really make the program work the way you want it. And if there's something in there that you don't know how to do, you could code your own little mini program and make it work the way that you're used to. There's actually lots of Rhea scripts that I use on a regular basis. Chord Gun is a great one. Number seven, size. There's no bloatware to worry about. It takes up hardly any space. You can import all the JS plugins, all the SWS extensions, and save a completely new custom configuration, and you're only looking at about 250 megabytes which is crazy. You can easily bring Reaper with you anywhere on a thumb drive, your phone, even transfer it to your email address on free sites like wetransfer.com. Other popular DAWs average between three gigabytes and 70 gigabytes. You can save all that extra hard drive space for your VST plugins and bring them with you when you go to another studio. Number six, price point. I don't have this higher up on my list just because price is not that big of an issue, but there's a big difference between price and value. Low price doesn't necessarily mean high value. Just because something is inexpensive doesn't mean it's a great deal. And just because something is expensive doesn't mean that it's worth it. Think about all the designer products out there that are virtually no different from their cheaper counterparts. Reaper has an amazing price point. At just 60 bucks for the discounted license and only 225 for a professional 
you also get to keep your license for two full versions. If you got Reaper in version six, you get free updates all the way until version eight. Reaper also allows you to demo the software for free for virtually as long as you like. Now, I don't want to say that Reaper is free. It is not. And it is well worth the $60. So within a month or two of demoing the software, I guarantee you, you'll either want to buy it or move on. You don't need to keep going on forever saying that, hey, don't worry, I'm just still evaluating. Number five, that leads to updates, 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 and more updates. Reaper is constantly releasing updates. I know other DAWs, and I don't feel guilty saying this, but I used Acid Pro for many, many years. And it was so slow to update. And when the updates did come, hardly anything about it had changed. Reaper constantly is releasing updates, fixing issues, and listening to users' input to make Reaper more intuitive and easier to use. I've only been using Reaper since Reaper 6. And now I'm already on Reaper 6.30. I also get to keep using it for my 60 bucks all the way until version 8. Kakos is created by Justin Frankel from Winamp fame and John Swartz from Olga fame. These two guys wanted to create a DAW that was affordable and easy for the novice to use to the pro. They are less concerned about money and revenue than in creating a quality product. Justin Frankel made tons of money off of Winamp being sold to AOL. So he decided he wanted to make something that people could use rather than just selling a product. And that's what kind of sets Reaper apart from a lot of other DAWs that seems like they're more concerned about being popular and making money versus actually giving something back to the music making community. Number four, stability. Really, I have pushed Reaper to the limits, even past what I have been able to do in Ableton, FL Studio, Pro Tools, and way past anything I was able to do in Acid Pro. Pro Tools is notorious for crashing. Acid Pro probably crashes twice as frequently as Pro Tools. I'm not sure of the technical reasons as to why this happens, but Reaper does not experience anywhere near the amount of hiccups and issues that many other DAWs have. It just works. You load it up and many times opening Reaper, closing it, and reopening is faster than just opening a session in almost any other DAW. The one time that I had an issue where Reaper freezed up is because a VST was having an issue loading in a sound bank. And instead of Reaper crashing, which this would have happened if it was Acid Pro, Reaper just froze the actual VST and took it offline. And it saved me from hours worth of edits that I had not saved. Number three, personalization. I know this might not be as important to other people, but for me, this is extremely important. Reaper works the way that you want it to work, with shortcuts, hotkeys, and all kinds of great toolbars. Other DAWs simply do not even come close to the level of personalization that Reaper has. You can create custom actions, cycle actions, custom shortcuts. It's so easy to pull up the action list and find everything that you need, create a hotkey, and it's right there for you whenever you need it. Ableton doesn't even allow you to change any of the hotkeys. Other DAWs allow you to change the hotkeys, but you can't create cycle actions or custom actions. If you're not sure how to use a feature, just open up the action list, type in a few words, and you're going to see your feature pop up and you'll be able to learn more about it and even create a custom action using that action. Number two is customization. Again, this is very high up on my list and it may not be for others. I've heard people say Reaper is pretty ugly to look at. And you know what? The stock Reaper loading up with the default six configuration. Yeah, I kind of agree. It's not very easy on the eyes. I've spent so much time customizing my Reaper to the way that I want it to look. And it's actually a lot of fun to do. You can customize the color themes. You can even edit the actual zip files that they come in and pick and choose what images you want to use in the file. There's instructional videos on this and forums on how to tweak everything down to the icons and the toolbars. Reaper wants you to make it your own. They want you to make it feel like it's your own and look the way you want it to look. 
some people start using Reaper stock and then realize that they can fully customize everything and all the toolbars and they make some truly custom beautiful masterpieces if you don't believe me check out some of the stuff by white tie he has the imperial or the dark side themes that are absolutely beautiful blank files has the logic theme that is absolutely breathtaking and looks just like logic and you can even have it act like logic and then the one that i personally love the most and i have made my own version of is the smooth six v2 which leads me to number one the community i have yet to come across a community in any other daw that truly seems to care for one another and i know it sounds cheesy but it really is true if you go onto a reaper forum you best believe you're going to get an answer so quickly that it will make your head spin and it's usually going to be so detailed and linked to all sorts of other types of things that will get your answer the way you need it to be told to you so my personal favorite is going to be Reaper Mania and Reaper Blog. Starting with Reaper Mania, it's the encyclopedia for Reaper. Kenny Joya is literally the human encyclopedia for Reaper. Hi, I'm Kenny Joya, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. He even sounds like Christopher Walken giving you information. It's all easy to understand, quick and to the point. His videos are so well put together that if you've ever had any question, chances are in seven minutes, he will answer nearly everything on an entire subject. He also has the website that has manual style information for you to follow. Reaper blog is another fantastic resource. John Tidy is kind of like the encyclopedia part two, except he's a little bit more on the technical aspect of Reaper. He's all the little intricate things that you might want to tweak and change. He can help you with changing color themes. He can help you with customizations, custom toolbars, and he'll even answer all your questions in the Kakos forum. Next up is Hot Pole Studios. This one is a little bit more focused on helping you create songs from start to finish and how you would do that inside of Reaper. Then you also have the Reaper stash. Reaper Stash is going to have all kinds of information in it, as well as custom skins, themes, toolbar icons, track icons, and much, much more. Kakos Forums, they will be able to answer all your questions. And they go into so much detail that you actually start to figure out how the program is coded and how you can make it work for yourself. Now, I understand that other DAWs like Ableton and FL Studio are so popular that there's so many tutorials, that there's so many videos out there of people using it, that it's really easy to find the answer to your question. Reaper may not be the number one most easy DAW to use, but everything that you want to do and everything that I've been able to do in other DAWs, I found that I can do in Reaper. So obviously I hope this list helped maybe change your mind on what Reaper is all about. If you're on the fence, give it a try. Of course, you're going to get that free trial to be able to try it out for basically as long as you need to be able to truly evaluate it. But I highly, highly recommend purchasing the license. It's 60 bucks. You're not going to have to worry about it taking up a bunch of space. It's going to be easy, quick and to the point. And if you have any questions about the stuff that you have, go to Reaper Mania on YouTube or the Reaper blog, and you will find out exactly how to use this powerful software at a fraction, I mean, a minute fraction of the price of Pro Tools. So thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you on the next one.